These are several poems about the experience of having breast cancer. The sequence is called Changing the Subject. Outpatients. Women stripped to the waist, wrapped in blue. We are a uniform edition, waiting to be read. These plain covers suit us. We're inexplicit. It's not our style to advertise our fearful narratives. My turn. He reads my breasts like braille, finding the lump I knew was there. This is the episode I could see coming. Although he's reassuring, doesn't think it's sinister, but just to be quite clear, he's taking over. He'll be the writer now, the plot master, and I must wait to read my next instalment. Diagnosis. He was good at telling, gentle but direct. He stayed with me while I recovered breath, started to collect stumbling questions. He said, cancer with a small c, the raw stuff of routine, yet his manner showed he knew it couldn't be ordinary for me. Walking down the road, I shivered like a gong that's just been struck. Mutilation, what have I done? My child, how long? and noticed how the vast possible array of individual speech is whittled by bad news to what all frightened people say. That night, the freak storm. I listened to trees fall, stout fences crack, felt the house shudder as the wind howled the truest cliché of them all. How are you? When he asked me that, what if I'd said, rather than very well, dreadful, full of dread? Since I have known this, language has cracked, meanings have rearranged, dream, risk and fact changed places, tenses tip, word roots are suddenly important, some grip on the slippery. We're on thin linguistic ice, lifelong, but I see through, I read the sentence we all are subject to in the stopped mouths of those who once were I, full-fleshed, confident, using the verb to die of plants and pets and parents until the immense contingency of things deleted sense. They are his future as well as mine, but I won't make him look, I say, I'm fine. Difficult passages. You did not proper practice, my cello teacher's sorrowful mid-European vowels reproached me. Many times play through the piece is not the proper practicing. You must repeat difficult passages. So when you make performance, there is no fear. You know the music is inside your capacity. Her stabbing finger, moist gaze, sought to plant the lesson in my soul. I've practiced pain for 40 years, all those Chinese burns, the homemade dynamo we used to test our tolerance for shocks, hands wrapped round snowballs, untreated corns, all pain practice. Fine, if I can choose the repertoire. But what if some day I'm required to play a great pain concerto? Will that be inside my capacity? I shall paint my nails red. Because a bit of colour is a public service. Because I am proud of my hands. Because it will remind me I'm a woman. Because I will look like a survivor. Because I can admire them in traffic jams. Because my daughter will say, Yuck, because my lover will be surprised, because it is quicker than dyeing my hair, because it is a ten-minute moratorium, because it is reversible. Watching Swallows In my fiftieth year, with my folded chin that makes my daughter call me Touche Turtle, in my fiftieth year, 
with a brood of half-tamed fears clinging around my hem. I sit with my green shiny notebook and my battered red notebook and my notebook with the marbled cover. And I want to feel revolutions spinning me apart, reforming me, as would be fitting in one's fiftieth year. Instead, I hum a tune to my own pulse. Instead, I busy dead flies off the sill and realign my dictionaries. Instead, through the window, I make a sign of solidarity at swallows massing along the wires. This is a poem about the loss of someone who was very dear to me, but it's more generally, too, about the ways in which we remember people who have died. Through language, in fact. Satyaji. Dusk, and the boathouse keeper calls the late scattered boats from beyond the curve in the lake, calls them by name. Hirondelle. Angelique, Georges Sand. Are they real or imagined, those smudges of black in the shade of the far bank? Again his call, carrying, returning. What's in a name? You are, in the name I called you by. Its weight and shape, hard to convey, except it lent itself to tenderness teasing and respect, closeness and a certain distance. Now it's a vessel for the far-flung, only sure reality of you. Love draws you back. In saying your name, I see it boat-shaped and luminous, stitching the dark, returned from formless drift around the world. Let me recall you. I've words enough, a sheaf of versions. My pen engraves you differently each time. Nothing can be held or hurried. Wind casts a shiver on the water, shallows uncertain in withdrawing light. A phalarope races its image and is gone, reflected, relinquished, discarnate as the distant boats the boathouse keeper calls and calls, only a name to summon each of them. Yet here they come. Okay. Life on Mere. They took small fish to observe the effects of weightlessness in water. Goldfish, ordinary on earth, were now miraculous, their glitter precious currency. Their tiny mouths, O oh, and O, oh, a greeting. So that when they died, some men wept, feeling as if for the first time how grave a life is, any life at all. Countdown to Midnight. It's coming in silence, the way an abstraction takes shape as an image waiting to grow. It's coming as hope against hope, potential as infancy or unmarked snow. It's a ship of uncertain destination, a breathing space between promise and dread, an imperfect cadence, a Chinese whisper, a code book no one could hold in their head. And though the voice of reason grumbles, dates change nothing. And the pledges the old year offered were paper thin. Still, to the parliament of wishes, our blinkered, greedy, quarrelsome humanity, let New Year come.